growing dark Back from the dead is a miracle dark They counted me out, moment of truth Counting it down, I'm that the story was down for the count Back on my feet, back with a mic Back on the beat, back with a fan Let it bang in the streets, the game won't lock I stand with a key, standing my ground I am planning to flee, standing my ground I am planning my feet, taking a stand Erasing my destiny, shaking his hand Flipping the script, changing the plans Up to the top and I'm taking the fans what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Thursday Night CrossFit Talk. Did you notice the new open? Yes. I saw my little face out there. Yeah, we, we gave you the wiggle head like everybody else has. <laughs> I was trying to think of what picture that was from. I was like, <laughs> I, I took it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a picture I took of you at the games. Um, you were actually front squatting. It was the uh, back nine. Okay, that, that's what I thought. I was like, I think it's the yoke picture or something. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, it was back when I was in the pit two years ago and actually was getting good pictures. <laughs> um, and I have some of you with the yoke too. One really, like, because you were in, in the lane right by the pit. So as you were coming by, I like, I got one that's like super close up. Great. Because so. <laughs> we all love those sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're lifting whatever weight that was on that yoke. That was a heavy workout. Yeah. Very. I liked it. So um, so here we are, Thursday Night CrossFit Talk. Uh, the Open is over. Um, what do you want to get into first? Anything new with you guys before we get into the Open Talk? This Carolyn, you're back in Canada. Yes, I'm back in Canada. I got back Sunday afternoon. Um, back because I had I was on March break. Right? That's why I was in California. So, got back Sunday afternoon and then went back to work on Monday. So, you don't students, miss a beat. Are, students are all thrilled to come back after a week, and teachers as well. You know, <laughs> I was telling Jamie that at the gym because I've just gone but started going back. It's spring break next week, and yeah. there were people in my class not doing the board workout because they wanted to save their legs for their spring break vacation. <laughs> <clears throat> now, the one guy was going skiing, so I do kind of yeah. get that. That's you, know, you don't want to have ripped up legs going skiing, but yeah. So, Jamie, anything with you? Nope. I just have my members ball Saturday. So just been trying to gear up for that. Members ball. Yep. You have like a dance? Yep, exactly. Dress up full on. Um, we usually do it in December, but the last two years, that's like, it's always right around legends and it just takes a huge toll on me um, in Christmas time and it's hard. So I thought I would do it after the open. Um, and I... I posted like two months ago this date and nobody said anything. And and you would think I would know because I have a kid. But again, our spring break is the same. Starts next week. Um, now I have a lot of people like or not RSVPing to me like, well, we're going on spring break. And I'm like, why didn't you guys say something two months ago when I put the date out there? And I would have moved it a week later. Well, that'd be Easter, but I don't know. Yeah. Communication, communication, communication. I, yeah, that's why I put save the date out there two months ago. <laughs> it's like Lex always communicates with me that she beats me in Heat 1. Always. I should have done it. I like doing it and battling with Lex. Yeah, I usually do too. But I again, I said this Sunday night, my biggest beef is they added those underdog yeah. matchups. And they didn't tell you when until it was like right about to go. And I missed it two different mm -hmm. weekends. So I got once, zero on those. Once I missed the first week of the open for the heat one, I was like, well, there's no point to hop in now because I'm assuming it was too late to yeah. try to win. Well, Carolyn, you watched a movie that made you cry. Oh my movie? gosh, you guys. It was called. Arthur the King. Am I right, Lex? You can go. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. Yes. So Lex and I love our, our doodles. And the one dog looked a little scruffy at first, but then you kind of got to like know the dog and this, you know, group of 
four people go on this adventure. Um, like the mountains, like biking, running, everything, so many miles. And then they see this dog at the beginning. And then they also, and then like 200 miles later, the dog, like after like Mark Wilbert, like feeds the dog some meatballs, the dog like found its way back to them. And then they like did the race with the dogs. I'm not going to give it up, but I don't know. Lex and I just got so emotional the whole time. Cause I think we just like, I don't know for me, like I just like pictured like me and Lex kind of probably doing something like that. And then you start thinking about like your dogs and man, Lex had to put some sunglasses on to go to the store after because we were a hot mess. Hot oh, mess. that's cute. <laughs> It's such a hard cry. She had to go sunglasses. <laughs> like the lights are off at the end of the movie. And I'm like, Lex, put your sunglasses on now before the lights turn on. No. Yeah, it, was, it was good. Don't worry. Like it's, it's a good ending, but it's still just a, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I, I had a pretty boring week. Just it would seem busy with, with like nothing accomplished, but yeah. Uh, tomorrow I go see my cardiologist for my follow-up, so that'll be good. I get in there and get, hopefully, clean bill of health and no AFib, all that. So, yeah. But I'm feeling good. I told Jamie, um, it's great getting back into the gym, but I am hurting. Like, I am so sore. My legs are completely trashed. My legs are still sore from the open. <laughs> I think yeah. I, I think I did something. And I, I can't tell it to Lex because she just sends me the world's smallest violin every time I try to complain about anything. She just sends me an emoji of a, a violin. She's like, you're fine. But, like, I was so sore from this one. Like, I did it the Friday in California. And then I was sore Saturday. I was sore Sunday. Like, going down the stairs was awful. Monday at school, I could barely go down the stairs still. How I redid the workout on Monday, I have no idea. I tried to squat for the first time today. And I did like a high hang squat snatch at like 115 pounds and can barely get out of the bottom. Like my quad seized up again. And like I could barely flex my knee after. I was like, geez, I'm like, I got to take more days off again from squatting. So I just did everything upper body. I haven't been able to squat since. So I think I did something. But don't tell Lex because she she doesn't let me complain about it. Well, that's why you have this show. You can come. Yes, I can. I can vent here. Yeah. So, yeah. perfect segue. Uh, you and Jamie competed at a high level at the Open. Did you have something to say, Jamie? Did I cut you off? I, well, I was going to say because I did it Thursday and I was only sore like in my lats and like my biceps, just like my pulling. Um, and and I heard a lot of people saying like their legs were sore, and I you know. I, I suck at squatting. I'm like, I just don't use my legs clearly. Um, well, I redid it on Monday, even though we talked about Sunday, me not redoing it. I redid it anyway. And I must have used my legs, glutes, everything. <laughs> I am a wreck as well. Still, and, and, still now, right? Yes, still today. Well, get this. Then Wednesday I did at every minute on the minute. Well, it was every night, every minute 30, cause it was 30 second rest three wall walks, max thrusters at 95 pounds. So for 10, for 10 rounds of that, I did 90 more thrusters. I had, <laughs> I, I had thrusters program this week and I was like, no, nope. yeah. Like today, so now today I had an overhead squat. Nope. Didn't skip that. Did power snatch instead. Yeah. Well, so I did this because Tristan had programmed for me 50 chest to bar, um, 15 squat snatch, 25 bar muscle ups, 15 overhead squat with like burpee back jump in there. And I was like, I can't do, I literally can't do any more pull ups, chest bars or bar muscle ups right now. And so I was like, I'll do this thruster wall walk workout. I Lord knows I need to work on thrusters. Um, but yeah, I am, I'm totally wrecked. <laughs> I, 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 I hope my quads are fine. Like I, I think I have a small injury. Like, I don't know. Guys, let me vent. It's, it's fine. I'm in oh, my feelings. No. <laughs> I mean, worth it though, but yeah, <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see if it's worth it because if I can't squat for another week, I'm, I'm toast. <laughs> you have 30 days till quarters when everything means a whole lot more. Now you have a small window to get into semis for the elite athletes. 
Jamie, I know her dream is to make it to a semifinal. Plus, she's sitting really pretty going into the Masters. So, I want to talk about Carolyn first. You finished fifth in the Open. What is the process? Because we announced last week there is a there is prize money for the top five, meaning you hit the top five. What is the process you have to go through with CrossFit at this point? That Monday night, I got an email from CrossFit asking for the links to all three of my videos. So it was like a Google Docs thingy or forms of some sort. I sent in all three of my links and haven't heard anything since. We had until uh, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern to submit those three links, but mine were already all downloaded. So within literally a minute of receiving the email, I was sent in. I don't know if they'll validate each one because in the quarters you get a, an email when you send in your video. It says score is approved or right. whatever they want to give. I don't know if I'm expecting something like that for each of the videos or if they're going to just go through um, the videos and then at the end just announce the top five and we don't really hear anything until that announcement. I have no idea. That's crazy to me. Like I would think it would be like quarters or at yeah, quarters when you submit your, your video, then you wait to get a validation on the, on your app for the submission. Um, but normally like every year I get, I send in my videos or oft, oftentimes I have to send in my videos in the open and in the open, I don't recall or get or like, like receiving an email saying that the, like that the video was good. Yeah. I, I, I only remember it from the quarters and every year they'll ask normally, like after week one with you, if you're within the top, whatever, like you would submit a video, you don't really hear back from it. Week two, you submit your video. So I, I don't know if I'm supposed to hear from them or not. Do you know if it was just a top five? I heard a rumor that they asked for the top 10. Yeah. I had heard the same rumor as well. Top 10. That's probably smart. Yeah, you have to you have to go back because you can't you don't want to just do top five and then if there's anything then you got to re -add, add the or ask the top you know the rest of it it's just wasting time now yeah it's like sure. there's that I'm many glad, videos to look at right I'm glad that they asked all ten of you for all three videos like yeah. that's the way it sh this process should go f to pay out the open I just think it I I thought maybe week one they would start that process to yeah. not do it like last minute on them but. I mean, I'm, I'm glad they're asking for this stuff. Because I, I, had, I had said week one to you guys, right? I was like, I was surprised that I, I was like, that they hadn't asked for any videos. I was like, oh, that's weird. Sarah Cooper says, go Carolyn, Team Canada. Um, it, 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 it sounds to me like they only asked for the, the winner from each week. And now that they're at the money for the end, they're asking for the top 10 to validate the top five. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, because even if they gave a penalty to someone that's like in 40th, they're wasting their time, no offense, because it's not going to that, – that person's still going to qualify to quarterfinals. Yeah. Like even if you give a 20% penalty – if they're in the top 40, top 100, they're still like they're still so well into the zone of top 25% that why even do it? I so I, I get it from the CrossFit, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. I've got more questions about that when we get a little bit further down, but so Jamie, you mm -hmm. finished you were going into the last week like in 97th, I think, like just inside the top 100. You finished like 121st? One, yep, 121. Um, this year, overall in the world, not age group, but overall in the world at 40 years old. Um, and you finished like top 40, I don't remember the exact number, in North America East. 31st. Yep. So what kind of confidence does that give you competing against the elites or does it not matter because the open doesn't matter 
yeah, that's what like sucks. Like it doesn't matter. So it's like, I can't, you can't even use it as any type of barometer because there's people like TM Brooke who really didn't even do the workout. And so, you know, there's people that could do it, could, could edge you out, but like, Still, yeah, it, it, uh, still though, that, that's, that's still really good. Like it's still, and people say they don't care about the open, but they're still going hard for whatever, if, whether they're doing one attempt or some of them are doing two attempts and they're just not saying they're doing two attempts. Mm -hmm. Like Roman redid it. He didn't have to redo it, but he redid it. Pat redid it because he was close, but like there's people that are still redoing it. So like they're still yeah. trying for their one attempt if it's one. So I think it's still, it still shows you're like, you know, you're right there with the elite still. She has a world-class engine. Like yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. And that's where it's like, I, in a way I wish it mattered so that I could see where I am in things like that. Because like, I know Dave kind of touched on this point. Like he's like, you can say the open doesn't matter, but like, and maybe things are changing a little bit, bit to the point where it won't. But he has said like, historically, you can probably tell like the top five at the games based on looking at the open leaderboard. And, um, I, and I do feel like in a sense, the, the, because the open is like kind of the engine based stage. And then you also t typically see like running a lot of running at the, at the games, like the games has more engine work. Um, I always have felt like I would perform really well at the games. If I could just get there, I can't get there because the middle stage is always the ma maxes really heavy at semis, really heavy. Like uh, there's always a lift in quarterfinals to get there. Like, mm -hmm. So I can't get there, but I like I feel like the open is a pretty good pretty good representation representation of the games, um, minus a few things, of course. So it's like in a in a way for me, I just wish it mattered a little bit so I could see where I would fall. Somewhat. Yeah, and just to throw everybody in, you finished third in the world in your age group. Yeah. So you are solidly moving on. Yeah. And in, in both venues and this year it's cool because you get to compete in both with just one attempt yeah um by combining them this year which i think is a one of the smart moves that crossfit has made yeah yeah that's cool i'm excited for that so, I, like, you know, I liked oh, what um i think yes yeah, Paige semenza she had, either it was a story or it was a post or something and she talked about like the open like when people say like the open doesn't matter and i feel like we've all said it as like elites but it's like your own personal result if you're an elite doesn't matter. But the open does matter in terms of like if you're part of a community, like the open is like the, for, it's kind of like sad to say that in front of people that like the open does matter to hold. If you go to the CrossFit gym like that, the open does matter. Like people are buying into it. People are trying to, you know, do the best that they can. And it's like what like you can say your result on the leaderboard doesn't matter, but I don't think it's fair to say like the whole open doesn't matter. Cause it is a very important stage for everyone in our community. And it's like, you know, you can run um, a, you know, sign up for a race or whatever, whatever sport you want to do. Right. Like you can train at, train for a 10 K or a marathon and do it whenever, but then it's like, you still want to sign up and see how, how well you can do. It's like, that's, that's why you sign up for the open. That's why these members do, do the open. So it's like, it still matters. So I like that from, um, page. It just kind of was like, you know what? Yeah. I think we have to stop saying like the open doesn't matter because it is very important for a lot of people in our community. And it's just like your own personal result, I guess, isn't you're not, you know. And, and I saw that post earlier today. What I liked about it is, is she said, because she was part of the community this year yeah. and let herself be a part of the community, it was important to her again. Yeah. Her result may not have been exactly important to move on, but she got to enjoy the open with her community. Yeah. A great I, post if you haven't seen it. I do agree with that. And like, and I've taught, I've wrestled back and forth with that because I do think it is important for like the elites to be a part of the community. And if this is what it takes is like a little less pressure, like you don't need to go do it at noon or, or yeah. without the community or like just come in and get it done. And 
I mean, you would think they'd still have a pretty darn good st- score, even not stressing over it. Um, but like, I've like tried to think like, is there a way to make it matter some way? Like, could you, could you take your placement into not like your score, but like, like if you're fifth, you're fifth going into quarters. Like you have five on the board and I have 121 on the board going into quarters. Like it's just hard because of the, they would have to validate videos and actually look into it because agree that I don't think it can transfer if there's not a thorough video review. I I totally agree with that. But I do like that idea because what I hated every, every year is like you, you start back over at zero, but I still did something and you still did something in the open. These, these st- style of tests should still be a part of a, like, they're like, Oh, like we don't need to test that because we've already tested it, but it's like, but it's not counting. So but it's not counting yeah. anymore. So, right. so yeah, I don't know. Like I, I wish there was a way that your performance could still carry over at a certain mm-hmm. point. Yeah, me too. I think you hit the nail on the head, Carolyn, though. Like, without video validation, it's impossible. Correct. But they did it in the Masters for so long, right? Like, your open yeah. score was your next um, – was one of your scores, if, I'm, if I remember. They only did it the first year. And then it was so weighted in a and, – and it caused so much grief. I think they did away with it. Yeah. Okay. I thought they did it for a few years or something like that. But regardless, it's just, it would be too hard, I think. I think with the bandwidth of of headquarters HQ, they just couldn't right now. Right. I guess. <laughs> Even if they were to open up the videos to the, like everyone post a video, it still wouldn't be enough. Like people aren't going to look at every single, like it's just, no. Yeah. Yeah. Way too much. So my, note, my notes got a little bit out of order and and kind of messed up, but I'm going to go to um, CrossFit announced the official winners um, of 24.3. And that was Yona Koski and Rebecca Fusile. It did not come without its controversy. Um, a lot of people speculating that Rebecca did not come to full extension. I guess my first question to you is what is your opinion? Did you see her video and what are your thoughts? I can start. I, I saw it like immediately and I was like, Oh my gosh, like those are not full extension. Um, and I know she's got her whole, I, I like Rebecca. I just, I think this is the same thing with the deadlifts. Like, you don't penalize this. She, you can specifically tell like a stark difference between the 65 pound and the 95 pound bar. And that right there should tell you something like, I don't necessarily care that her elbows bent. I care that it's like here on the 65. She's only going to here. She's not here with a bent elbow. She's out front. So like, I, I did not see that, but okay. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think she, I didn't think she was that much out front. I didn't think she was that much out front. It's it's more just, I think the angle of her um, elbow and like, I have trouble. Like if I wear a t-shirt, like, like sometimes it looks like I have a bend, but it's just the way that literally my, like the way my bicep looks like this. Like whenever I do a double kettlebell overhead, like some people have like a hyper extended elbow, mm-hmm. like, especially when they catch a jerk. Like when I catch my jerk, I'm here and it's like, this is my lockout. And it's like, it, it'll look. So it's like when she was explaining it, I, I don't know. I could understand it and I could see like the whole. So where, yeah, she, won, I just, where she won me over, where she won me over is there is a restricted movement clause that if you tell your judge mm-hmm. that you have a restricted movement and it is, and you talk about it before the event, now, you know, online, that makes it a little bit difficult. Um, but you tell them that. She showed video of her doing handstand walks, pulls, hangs, and the bend is still in the arm. Yeah, her jerks. I've seen her, 
move countless times as like the double kettlebell the the hurt jerks like everything it's you can see the elbow like this soft looking elbow but it's not it's just like that's her honestly she could go she could probably pause more she would have yes. still won the workout she would have well, still that's what, she was so that's far in front of the second place so let, let's say the 65 she if she, like let's say she did just pause that brief second and that like let's say she, there's no there's no difference in what she does she just pauses i think that would make you feel better right jamie it would for sure make me feel better it yeah, would like, say, be... same position same angle everything but there's a slight pause because you're like oh i guess that that's the end point right there you know um if there was I don't, like a split it second would be, it would look probably better it but would I don't look better but a difference the cumulative fatigue of doing that is what she's missing that other people are getting. But she's locked out at her elbow. That's the thing is she's still getting that cumulative. Like she, that, that, like that's, I think, I think from her elbow, like that's what it's hard to, like, I don't know. I don't have that. I personally think there's quite a difference between the 65 and the 95 with the, where it, where it ends up the with, angle. on her. Yeah. Um, I, I was uh, looking at the elbow. So specifically when trying to prepare for this show, I'm trying to watch so many things to kind of catch up. Like I'm just looking for spot things, but I think Andrew's missing a word or something. Cause I'm having a hard time understanding this. I disagree. I can that her elbows can't extend that like that. I, I don't know if it's, I can tell or I can't tell her elbows can't extend like that. After judging so many athletes that have elbow issues, I can spot it. So I don't know if he's who he's disagreeing with, but hopefully he can clear that up for us. But I think regardless, she would have won the workout had she even paused for a split second. But I don't I don't think that's like by it. Like her depth is fine on the squat, her bar muscle ups were good, like her feet aren't rising above the bar, which you'll see from people. Her chest to bar was was fine like i didn't see it so much in front for me it was more the elbow locked and again depending on the angle of the video as we've seen you know what where you place your yeah. camera can can affect so like was did the barbell shift just a tiny bit of an angle so now when she got to the barbell in those 95 you're all of a sudden you're seeing a slightly different angle than where the barbell rolled you know like we don't know like what, like, even though the camera's in the same angle, like that barbell's not in the exact, exact same spot, but it, the speed is definitely faster in the first one. Um, it's hard. I don't know. It's hard. I if there was no, that. if there was no elbow, elbow issue, you'd be like, okay, yeah, like no. But with the, her video explanation, I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, and I've seen her every comp with the elbow sleeve and, and, trouble with the lockout and she catches and it's here. I don't know. So like we talked about last week, um, Yona winning or taking second in the second workout and first in the third, that's a pretty varied style for the two movements. What, what does that say for Yona winning? And he won the open overall. What does that say for him going into the season? He's fit. He's always been. He's always done well in the open. These are great workouts for him. I don't think it says too much. Not Nothing that we don't already know about him. Like, he's not an unknown. If it was an unknown person, you'd be like, oh, we've got to watch out. But he's. we know he's fit. Like, he's he's battled some injuries in the last few years, I think, that he hasn't performed sometimes as well. But he had a great season last year, I think. Nothing so, new. Um, Lex says, um, I mean, I get it. I've had Tommy John surgery in October and have a torn labrum still, and the positioning isn't great for me either. A full lock a full lockout is rough when you've had surgery. Their ligaments aren't the ligaments aren't the same. Well, Lex has had 72 surgeries. <laughs> so I'm not sure she's the best example. But no, I think she's talking also about Fusier's had surgeries on her elbows. I was just giving her a hard time. But yeah, she has had many. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, it's and, just tough. I would have liked to have seen maybe a couple different angles, but we don't have that, right? And we don't know if she sent maybe a couple different angles to CrossFit. Who knows? I think she showed one, a different angle. Um, I, well, she I've has two different videos. Two videos. Yeah. yeah, she has two different. Yeah. Um, Kenneth asks, "What's worse, the no reps on twenty no reps on twenty four two or twenty four three? In general. In general. Twenty four point three. Yeah. Because the deadlift is to, no offense, you kind of irrelevant in the twenty four point two for the elite. So even if they want moderate." like lockout extension doing that on 24.3 is a way bigger factor on the workout. If you're not hitting depth or the lockout position, then what the deadlift would do for the result. Cause it was more about the row pace and it was more about your execution on the double unders. So for me, it would be by far 24.3 would be more um, worse Totally agree. I think my biggest grief on 24 2 is 90% of the people didn't lock out the deadlift at the top. And they picked one to make an example of. And that to me was just wrong. Agreed. Yeah. Um, Especially but, for 200 reps penalty. Insane. Yeah, that's crazy. In a movement that was insignificant to the elites, really. Right. Yeah. I know back here someone said uh, justice for Tudor. There we go. Justice yeah. for Tudor. Yeah, it's not yeah. right. So so there's that. Uh, we also had uh, the TM Brooks situation. My biggest questions are, one, is this going to set a precedence? Are elite athletes now going to look at the open and injury or not, like, Brooke and T, I think, had valid reasons to not push through. They need to survive to the next round. But elite athletes can look at that and say, well, heck, I can have a 25,000th finish and still move on. Are more elite athletes going to bow out on certain workouts if they know they can do just enough to get through? It's entirely possible. I think no. I think you want to have confidence. You want this. We don't get to measure each other against everyone in the world very often. The open is that time. Like you've gone almost a full year of training. You can do an online qualifier somewhere where you get, you get a certain amount of people that you get to compare against. Now you got the whole field at play. Like I want to see where I'm at at this point in the season. I want to see, I want to get confidence going into the season. Like I want to perform well. I want to do well just myself. Like I know for me, I wouldn't just like throw it in the bag to the point where I'd get like just going through the motions. Like I would, I still want to put a, a great effort. That's me personally, but I'm competitive. So I was just going to say the two of you are probably two of the most competitive people I've ever met. So I could never see you guys doing that. I just see someone that like, and, and not that I think Brent would do this, but like someone who is very strategic about everything he does, like looking at it and then in analyzing, I, I should sit out and train through this and just do enough to get through and then really push hard. And Brent's someone who's never really done great at the open anyway. Right. But I think it's a missed opportunity. I think, I, I think it's a missed opportunity to do your your like your your camera setups to to push the to push the the envelope to maybe redo a workout and learn from stuff because you got quarterfinals in a month, and this is you know this is prep season. Like I did, I did a, a an online comp before the open so that I'm ready because all of these young people that are coming up through the teen division, for instance. They're good at open. Why? Because and online qualifiers, because that's all their season is, is online. So if you are if you're not good online, you're not making it to the semis or the games. And I know it's super competitive in the East. So like I did a, an online comp prior to the open just to, to get myself ready and to get an intensity that I don't get normally 
Like I want to feel like this soreness that I felt and still feel this weekend. Like I'm going to feel that at quarterfinals. And if you're not doing that at some point in your training, you can do a mock weekend all you want, but you're still not at the intensity that you would like the quarterfinals, like a semifinals, like the open when you're actually pushing. And I think it would be a missed opportunity to not go to that spot a month before once at least one workout of the weekend, you can put your training to the side and put your head down and and go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Hopper said that too. Like he was using that Taylor versus Hopper as like competition. See, Yeah. Like, let's try to red line here. Let's see how hard I can go out out and hang on. Um, Yeah. I mean, I, that's kind of why, partly why I redid them because I was totally missing that intensity in all of my first attempts. So do you think you're better for retesting that you'll be able to ramp up the intensity better come quarters? Yeah. So like the last two years I didn't redo at all. And I was just like one and done. You don't get the opportunity to redo at comps. So you need to learn to do it the first time. Um, And I feel like I went pretty hard last year, but like, I, I feel like I pushed myself harder this year. So I don't know. Like, and I don't, like, I don't want to have to, to to have to take that, right? Like, I want to be able to just do it one time. I want to be able to just go out there and plan accordingly and do it correctly. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. And it's also your highest open finish ever. Yeah. Could be a correlation there. Yeah. So, Jamie, Lex, and Brooke all have the same entry. Will Brooke be ready for quarters? So we got four, three, three more weeks. Uh, ish, yeah. I it gave me a little bit of pause that that was her first chest of bar she'd done in eight weeks, and she, and she still hasn't done a bar muscle up. Like, and she did kick quarters, things. Yeah. Um there's for sure going to be ring muscle ups and more rig. I would assume there's going to be more test bar of some sort. Her issue is going to be, and it's the same issue when you have a weakness in a movement. If you're, let's say you're bad at gymnastics. If it, like I'm bad at double unders and that's a main one. That's in one workout. If there's one workout that has chest of bars and something else, and there's a second workout that has ring muscle ups and other things and possibly a third workout that has another gymnastics movement that has that rotational movement. That's, that's hurting her. Now she's going to have three scored events that is affecting her points. You can get away with it. Maybe with one event, she needs to hope that the whole freaking kitchen sink is all thrown. All the movements she doesn't like almost is like in, in one, if she can't do something and then crush everything else. Cause that's how I do it at the games with the swimming event. That's how I've got to survive my double under workouts. The moment things are separated, she will be in trouble. I think. Yeah. It, it doesn't help her cause that they've taken 25%. Um, you know, like now you're competing with three, 4,000 people who all might be able to start to edge you out on a few things. And that's really going to knock you down for a four, like 40 spots is tough. When and how many does North America East have out? Like I know, I know not all of them are going to sign up. But isn't it like something like eight or nine grand, eight or nine thousand women are moving on, or is that too much? I don't know what. Probably too much, but something like let's call it five thousand, five to six thousand. Yeah, it's a lot. Even if twenty five hundred of those two thousand sign up, if like that's a lot of people to compete against. Like that's what, I mean, I know that's going to like completely derail me. There's going to be a lift of some, of some sort or like a exponential, a, like a gated workout that gets up to super heavy. And there's going to be lots of people that can outlift me. Um, like she said, that she, could, she said she could snatch and do other things. It's just, I think it's just that rotational type of. Yeah. Work, right? I but, think. Yeah. Yeah, it's the kipping. I think it's that like swing through. Um, 
So again, if those, if those movements are in several different workouts, there's going to be an issue. If it's in yeah. one, she'll, she'll, I think she can make it. They're not going to be, I'd be curious how like handstand walk and handstand pushups are for her. Um, it seems to me that we have either it's on the opposite side or mine's more torn or something because I can't like, I feel like I can't really do like the lifts. Like, I don't know. And and it could be a function of, I'm just not comfortable. I've, I'm, I know that's my weakness. So I'm already in my head, like scared to catch a barbell and she just might be more confident in her lifting. Um, I, like Toto bar definitely hurts it. Um, but the fact that like, she like says she can't even like hang on the rig is like, I don't know. I'm curious. I'm curious how you can still snatch heavy and not do like that makes, that makes no sense to me. Handstand pushups bother me. Things like that. Like, I don't know. So I'd be curious on handstand pushups because those uh, won't be in the same workout. I would assume. And like, I'm just curious. Cause it's like, she, she didn't even attempt one. Yeah. Bar muscle. Like that's the thing. It's like, like she said in her video, she'll be fine. My quarters and it's like precautionary, but it's, I'm like, you, you couldn't do one. Just, you know, you, one that's a red flag. You yeah, know, she can flag. say that to maybe co convince herself mentally and to maybe shut it down publicly. But if you're not doing one a month out, still pretty early i'm assuming in the injury i've never had that injury but it's got to be nerve-wracking because it's going to be high volume and there's gonna there's i think it's gonna be multiple movements like i think toast bar will be in one in one workout and i think I ring agree. muscle ups will be in another like i i agree gonna be, and if there's only five scored events and there's two different scores that she can struggle on she's not making top 40. right Le the Lex field is says too good yeah, the field. Lex says I couldn't do a pull or toe to bar for months. Lex, I'm curious, could you like did handstand push ups or handstand walking bother you at all? Or was it just hate or just Le hanging things? Uh, Lex, are you talking about your labrum like like for your shoulder or your elbow? Because hers is her She's shoulder. Talking about labrum. She she has Sh yeah, shoulder. Hers, uh, hers is her um shoulder that's injured, right? For for Brooke, it's not her elbow. That was her, right. it's her elbow is her previous injury. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yep. Okay. Because Lex also has that from her, from Wada Palooza from a few years ago at the the rings. <laughs> oh, geez. So what I think is very indicative of this injury, Jamie has it, Lex has it. What they can and can't do is very different. Mm -hmm. So I think it all depends on where it is mm -hmm. and how, how bad the tear is. Yeah. So... My she, last injury. Her, her, her first two events were great, though, because she was she was within the top fifteen. I think she was top ten or something. Because um, she was one of the scores I was waiting on on the Monday. Because I'm like, okay, there's Tia needs to post, Brooke needs to post. I was waiting for the one girl from um, Switzerland or something like that. But I was like, oh. And then I saw her score. I was like, oh, Brooke did post. And I was like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> Coach Krispy Kreme says, shoulders are really different from person to person. And Lex clarifies, I have a slap tear, but my shoulder didn't dislocate. Yours didn't either, right, Jamie? No, it did. Oh, it, it did. Became, yeah. That's, like, that's how I knew I did something wrong. That's why they x-rayed it, because I like felt it come out of socket. Wow. And you're still third in your division. Yeah, but it's going to hurt. Like, there's going to be some stuff that come up that are a big problem. Yeah. Okay. So I did want to um, show some of Holly's stats um, real quick. Um, I don't, I'll do this one for, I guess I'll do, we'll do this first. Um, what I found interesting, I'm going to share my screen. So this is from data wad. Um, she actually looked at like how many people submitted scores 
from week to week? And what okay. was the loss? Oh. And so here from the men, from week one to week two, we lost 6,000 men. Wow. From week two to week three, 12,097 for a total of 18,523 people who signed up for the open and submitted a, and did and did not submit a score from week one that to week three. On the women's side, it was 4,000 from week one to week two, 12 from week two to week three, and 16,700 from week one to week three. And she huh. has this for every age group. She has this for every region. So if you want to see this, go out to either Data Wad on Instagram or our own Instagram, Clydesdale Media, and you can look through some of these stats. In addition to this, she looked at kind of like, does the open matter? And um, and she did this by, by region. So we're going to look at it this way. And it is whether they did better or worse from the 23 to the 24. And the arrow is either pointing down, up, or straight across, depending on how they did. Um, and so this is North America West. You can see whether people improved their score or got worse. Like look at Bethany Shadburn or Flores, 815th and 23. Barely knew if she was coming back or not. This year, 132. <clears throat> um, and then you go to uh, North America East. Uh, Danielle Brandon got better. Emma Lawson got worse. Alexis Raptor, sort of, like a lot of people dropped, but then Fee Sagafi mm -hmm. did so much better. Shelby Neal, so much better. Caroline Stanley, Paige Semenza. Mm -hmm. uh, so just a kind of an interesting take from regions and from, and she has this overall and, um, and the age groups as well. Interesting. So I think this is a this is a big indicator how seriously people took it maybe this year compared to last year. From this list, when I look, the one that stands out the most to me is Lawson. She's so good online. Like even if she doesn't try, I feel like she's like top ten. <laughs> like yeah. for open, she's so good at this stuff. So to see I her, her to win this year, so yeah. Yeah, you need Hopefully her to pull it together. Easy. So, and then um, so Amanda was unable to do the third workout, so she's out for the season. Oh, she didn't do it. Yeah. Amanda did Barnhart. She did the final workout. She got like twelve twenty eight. Yeah, it was like the same as me. Like, like I I assumed she would finish her on my score with her. Yeah, Amanda, Amanda did it. Okay. Because yeah. I remember her posting about it. That this was yeah. going to be her worst finish. And it still wasn't. It honestly was a decent score. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't like overjoyed with my score, but it was still fine. 12, 12, 28. Yeah. Yeah. I think this one, like finishing it, even for like just if you're close to that semifinal, you know, like if you're finishing it, you're that's a good score. That's a yeah. very good score, I should say. Not just good. <laughs> So make sure to check that out. Holly puts a lot of work in every week during the open. I'm sure she's going to do stuff for quarters um, just like that. Um, and she comes up with different things every week. So it's fun to kind of look at and see what, how her mind is working and what she's looking at. So with that, CrossFit made a, uh, an announcement today, uh, a press release, talking about <clears throat> their successes from the, the open this year. And that they set records for live stream uh, for workouts 24-1 and 24-2. They had 198,000 streams and 173,000 streams. And those are concurrent uh, live streams, respectively, for a total of 391,000. Um, I'm sorry, a total of 391,000 viewers watched the announcement across it open 24-3, 24-2, 24-1, 24-2, 24-2, 24-2, 24-2, 24-2, 24-2, 24-2, 24-2, 24-2, 24-2, 24-2, 24-2, 
during the first 24 hours after the live show. So, uh, still pretty good. Uh, pretty good numbers for live streams. Uh, the registration, um, they don't point out what Holly did that people didn't continue on, but uh, more than 343,500 athletes from 185 countries participated in the 24 CrossFit Open with 60% of the registrations coming from outside the U.S. Top five countries outside the U.S. were the U.K., France, Brazil, Australia, and Canada. The largest region was Europe with 112,000 <laughs> participants. Hold on one second. <laughs> I'll be right back. I think my, it's just fine. My lamp that fell over there scared me. Um, ghost. <laughs> nearly 90% of the participants were members of a CrossFit affiliate and wow. 10,744 affiliates had at least one member participating. Um, and then they announced the winners for 24-3 and the dates for quarterfinals. Uh, registration opens Monday, April 1st for individuals, teams, and age groups. Teams will compete over six days from April 3rd to April 8th, while the six-day competition for individuals and age groups will take place April 17th to April 22nd. So... 90% of people completed at an affiliate. Do we think that, <laughs> I mean, we know there's like pretty big contingent of like street parking and just your garage gym fitnessers. Do we think people are just going and finding a local box and doing the workout? So it didn't say they did it at an affiliate. They said they were On members through. of an affiliate. Right. Right. So like, and that, and I would argue it's probably like, it's probably that, like, it's probably like 70, 80% of people are affiliate members, but 90% went into an affiliate and did it and did it. The stat actually says that they are members of an affiliate. Yeah. They're not going to know that. I signed up under Grand Trunk. Does that, do you understand what I'm saying? I am not an affiliate. So I signed up under Grand Trunk. Okay. And so to them, it looks like I'm a member of an affiliate, even though I'm not. That's what that's what's happening is is garage gym and non affiliate members are signing up under an affiliate so they don't have to do the bullshit process. And I think that's a detriment to their whole system. Um, and then you get stats like this that are completely false. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Mm -hmm. And Jay Birch agrees. He did two in an affiliate, but not a member. When you, you signed up, Jay Birch, did you actually assign yourself an affiliate? Yeah. That's what you did, though, because you wanted to be on the team. Correct. But some people drop into gyms that are affiliates, and then they get judged by someone that's there, and then they don't have to submit their videos, and then they – like, we we get drop-ins that from to our gym – during the open from non affiliated. Yeah. I think, I think that stats can say whatever they want them to say. So yep, they're going to pick however they get the numbers and they're going to call it whatever it is yep. um, to put them in the best light in this case. So I want to put it out there. This is their press release of what they did. Well, I want to talk about what did they do good this year during the open and what did they do bad? Oh, you're oh you're asking now. Okay, I think. Well, I think that like I think weeks one and two were pretty spot on. I think week three could have been a little more inclusive to start. Maybe toe to bar, then chest to bar, then bar muscle up, and then I think it would have been an absolutely perfect, well rounded open. Um, I would add a little, few less complaints in my gym, I know. Um, but I think, yeah, I think they kind of crushed week one and two. It kind of, like, it gave some of my members false hope. Like, you, the people were really disheartened with the announcement of, of point three. And I, I hate to see that. Um, it could, because they were so excited with one and two. And they were like, 
oh man, like it just was this like false sense of hope. So they started hot, ended less hot. I don't know. Yeah, they could have done like three rounds, thruster and pull ups first, then three rounds, thrusters at heavier thrusters and chest to bars, then three rounds. Yeah. You know, yeah. With bar muscles. Yeah. I think that would have been great. just a, a more, you get to play around for three rounds at least. Yeah. Yeah. Versus seven thrusters or having to scale right away. Right. Um, what did they do? What did I like? I, I I think the golden barbell like idea of this online portal, like people submitting people to represent their community. And stories I think that, and stuff. That's good. Yeah. I think that was a, I, I think they're going in the right direction with things like that. That's yeah. going to get by, give some more buy-in. The fail was the week one barbell. <laughs> yeah. That one was a fail. Um, but in terms of the other one, like the community ones, I like those. Mm -hmm. um, the announcements, I thought two of the announcements were fine. Dave's and um, Rollins. Seth Rollins. Yeah. And then I thought the Jocko one, the virtual, I would have liked to have seen him there. There. Or someone else do it that could be there um, for the announcements. The matchups, I like the matchups. I thought they were fun. I just would like more leading up to the week, like more stories about the athletes that are going to be doing the head to heads. Like, I don't recall really many stories on the four athletes from week one or, you know, a lot of stuff on Justin and Colton for week two or same with the four. I know it was the four athletes in the last week was kind of last minute, but just some sort of pregame show type post or something would be nice on the Instagram just to for the community to know the athletes would be cool. Um, yeah. yeah. I, th I totally think Dave should have done the week three announcement and I think they missed the boat big time with not having Seth add an affiliate week one, trying to draw in a whole new crowd of signups. Like, yeah, they need to reach like broaden the market. And I, he was the perfect person to do that, but week two is too late. Nobody's signing up at that point. I, I, I think overall, I think overall it was a success. In general. I agree. I think the the problem with every like step forward is there was a step back. Yeah. Love Seth Rollins, hated the timing. Yep. And the Love the golden barbell, hated the athletes doing extra workouts. Yep. Loved, um, ah, shoot, Lo loved everything about what they were doing this year, and then they leak a workout. Like, it, it's they can't get out of their own way. And I, and I, my, the one thing that I have said, I think this, the, the shows were short. Yeah. What yeah. I wanted to see the after like interviews or the other people doing workouts. Like we, we didn't get to see Rollins do the workout with um, Miranda's husband. Julian. Julian. Yep. Yeah. Um, I would have liked to have seen that. I would have liked to have seen a sit down interview with the athletes, asking them how they feel. Are they going to redo it? Well, would you change? You know, you always got those, those type of interviews after. And it was just kind of like, you see the workouts and okay. Everyone logs off basically. And it's done. Like a, there was no closing. I would have liked to have seen like you announce the workouts and then the broadcasters talk about it. They can, you know, they have all these discussions on who they predict will do well on the workouts. And that would be cool. So, and I, and I, um, the only person that ever got interviewed was the winner. So whoever won the workout got interviewed the other person was just left to walk off, um, which I thought was weird. And I didn't like the tips and tricks before the workout. I like when it ran after. Like, you you see the, the elites do it. Now for you in your gym, these are the tips you should go with. Mm -hmm. Right? The Chuck Carswell, the Nicole Carroll, the whoever's doing it. I like yeah. it after. <clears throat> And Jody makes a great point. 
Taylor versus World was so well done and the competition was so tight. It it showed what is possible for an exciting match with just a two or three cameras letting two people go head to head, letting them smack talk, letting them do all that stuff and you get we got a post event interview with both athletes. So it showed what was possible. Um, yeah, I, I so that there's that. I don't want to I don't want to shit on too much because I think it was a very successful open. There was a yeah. lot of people. I think, I think there's a lot of positives, and even if things were there's some stuff. It's like okay, you know what? In the grand scheme of things, it's not going to affect that much the competition. People are moving on. A lot of people like twenty five percent. It's like if there was like even like a no rap thing or the Emily Claus situation at the end of the day, it's like, OK, let's move on. Like it's. Yep. And, and most importantly, with the Taylor versus the world, it showed that like any of us can do that. Yeah. Any of us can get two athletes head to head in a gym. And because the one thing I will will say about Taylor versus the world is we didn't have any female representation. Yep. We had very, very little in the open announcements. They were like a secondary um, to the men at the, the first and third and didn't even have representation at the second. And Taylor versus the the world was all men. Well, I thought it was interesting that Dave on one of his weekend reviews was like, oh, there's going to be more than two athletes, less than seven. Right. And then you saw that for number one, but then I thought that he meant for every week and then it was just going to be a duel and then another duel, but it was going to be the original thing was two males in week two and then two females in week three. So you had two and two in week one. So it would have been even it just, the plans changed, but I thought there was going to be more each week. Like I thought it was, I was waiting for like another person to get announced or something, but yeah. So, yeah. So I'd love to do something like that next year with some women. Um, I just, I think, though, that women are a little more guarded with their scores. They totally are. Holy cow. Aaron, Aaron watches the leaderboard and he's like, you know, you get like Noah's in there. Like, I mean, there's so many men that like post right away and like almost no women do that. And, and they'll wait till Sunday or Monday. And it's like, holy cow, it's ridiculous. It's so true. I hold. I play my cards close. Like this. <laughs> yeah, I, I said on our roundtable that you texted me on Monday and you said you had a shot, and you said you're not posting because you don't want someone to redo because of it. It's true. <laughs> I was, and then I was like, then once everyone had posted, I was looking at time zones. I was like, okay, there's only one person left that was close to around me, and it's in Europe. And I was like, it would be 11 o'clock at night right now. I think I'm good now. I can post. Like I was like, I was doing that in my head. So I'm like, well, if you put that early on in the day and you're in sixth place and you've only done it once, you know what? I'm doing it again. <laughs> I've done that before myself when I was doing like an online comp and I thought I, I had it in the bag and it's like, Oh, someone posted that better score. Get my butt to the gym. <laughs> yeah. It and it's it is the second highest payday of the season. And you had to do what you had to do to make sure that you Yeah, I can barely that. walk, guys. My quads. <laughs> my quads are sore. Lex, mute yourself right now, or earmuffs or eye muffs or whatever you want to call it. Don't don't eye muffs. Don't don't look or hear what I'm saying. Don't send me a violin. My quads are hurting. All right. So I want to finish up the service open and results. I know teachers, did they have, or did they only do, did they do teachers this year? Yeah, they've done, they've done, edu they call it educators for the last few years. They've did always put that second? one. What's that? Did I see you finished second. No, first. Oh, you finished first. Okay, good. It did. It made no sense to me. No. It was small yeah. print. And I was like, <laughs> What the heck? Um, 
so I I don't know how to pull those leaderboards up. It's like hashtag, right? Yeah, you have to hashtag it. I I was curious throughout the open because I I mean I, I always check the educator one every year, and uh, I learn a lot about athletes that are that have fake careers right now. <laughs> <laughs> that they put hashtags that they're this and that. And I'm like, you're a full-time athlete. <laughs> nice. like, yeah. I've known a couple. If you're, not, if you're not actively, I think doing that career, I think you shouldn't have that hashtag. Like if you, like it should be, if you, the only one that's, if you're not there, there's a military veteran. That's the only one that's like post, but everything else, I feel like it's like, if you're a college student, you're a college student. If you're a firefighter, you're a firefighter right now. If you're if you're like a 10-year retired firefighter, like it to me, it's more about like, I don't know. That's how I look at it. It's like juggling who's the firefighter right now that's the fittest, who's the p- police officer right now that's the fittest, the EMS, all of like do you guys think about it like that? Or should it be? Yeah. Whether you like it to me, it's, it should be if you're active service that's member. Great. Agreed. Minus the veteran one, but that's right. Like I'm not putting college student because I went to college 10 years ago. Yeah. Or you're taking right. one course right or now. Or if you have like an education degree, but you're not a teacher, you're not like, you're still, you're just, you're training full to like, to me, it's like <laughs> interesting. And there going. she is. Number one. Keep going down. And Christine best. I know she's still a teacher. Yeah, She's a teacher. Same, um, I think the, the Stein one. I did not know Freyova was a teacher. Did not. No. I, I she travels all over the world, so for her competitions, I'm surprised at that one. But if you go like to like firefighter college, like any like there's just a lot of athletes that are having these hashtags. I feel like. Uh, let's see. She's a firefighter. Hattie's huh. a firefighter. She was. That, that, but that's what I'm saying. Is everyone has these yeah. hashtags? I know Yaji has a firefighter. Like to me, I want to see the active members. Like I think there's something to be, yeah. especially if they're going to do an online comp or online, uh, an in-person comp or something for this. I want it to be active. Is my yay, my friend? John. Is this what um, Froning's doing? Is it at Mayhem? They're doing the no. They did the uh, everyday heroes or something last year. They might still be doing something. They are. They are okay. So they just announced it this week on their podcast. Awesome. That they're doing everyday heroes, <clears throat> five categories. So firefighters, law enforcement, I think military education and healthcare. So they'll take that leaderboard and invite nope. those people. Nope. All oh. new competition. Then what, and it's going to be all programmed f- because Angelo does a everyday hero, uh, training plan for mayhem. So he's going to program it. Oh. Then what will happen is this is new this year. They'll take the top two from every division uh, and if like one person can't make it, they'll go next on the leaderboard till they get two people from each one. They're going to bring them to Cookville and compete against. So firefighters versus law enforcement versus military versus teacher versus healthcare. Like team. Yep. Team in a team of two. I think the two or men four, and the two, two girls, two guys. Yeah. I think two guys, two girls. <laughs> So they won't even know each other too. Right. Hmm. They're doing an on, online qualifier for this. Correct. Okay. For some reason, I thought he said since CrossFit like dropped it, they were going to pick it up and do it. So I thought it was going to be used from from the opens. But. Yeah, I no, they're programming a whole new qualifier. They did this because CrossFit got rid of it last year. Right, right. And they're continuing it on. But CrossFit is doing something for it, right? Or no? I believe so. I think CrossFit just needs the winner. 
I think well, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I was getting confused with the everyday hero from the Mayhem group. That's yeah, the in-person one that I was thinking I don't thinking think there's about. any moving on from this, from CrossFit. You'll probably just get a certificate or something saying you're the fittest teacher. Yeah, that's what I think they're doing. Where Mayhem is taking it the step further, which I actually love that idea. Well, a few, a few years ago, we did have a secondary step. And it was the same workouts as the age group um, quarterfinals or something like that. So I don't know if they're still doing that second part. I don't players. believe so. Then there's some people getting some awards that they're full-time athletes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, two last items, and then we'll get out of here for the night. Uh, we have uh, Daniel Brandon Energy is going to be released next week, 327. They just released a new trailer 12 minutes before we went on the air. Um, and if you have not seen the interview with Daniel Brandon and Lauren Khalil on Talking Elite Fitness, you got to check it out. Um, Lauren really does a deep dive into this documentary and asks her if she had any input into the people they pulled in to interview for the documentary. And she said that, um, that she did have input, but at the end of the day, they grabbed who they thought was going to tell the best story. And Lauren asks her about Justin Kotler being in the documentary. And she talks about it in this interview and it's really, really good. I can't wait to see it. I can't either. Um, I've never, like, Danielle's always been kind to me, and I've always had a good relationship with her directly. Um, but I've always, I have had some questions with things that have happened in her career. But I think that complicated people like that are the most interesting to learn about. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's going to be a pretty, amazing documentary and it will be free on YouTube. Um, and it's, you know being, it I don't, I know it's being funded by rad. Um, but yeah, it'll be free on YouTube. I don't know if it's on her channel or rad's channel or what, but I'm sure it'll pop up in most of our algorithms come next week, but super interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I missed this one. <laughs> Probably don't even want to get into it. Uh, lots and lots of media drama going on today, uh, this week. Go check all that out if you want to. Um, pretty shocked at what kind of came out yesterday uh, from two different podcasts. Um, and it's and it, they're both long. Um, Kenneth DeLapp says, you know who has a good uh, doc on YouTube is Tim Paulson. I didn't see that came out. Um, I haven't, it hasn't popped up in my YouTube algorithm, but I'll have to go look for no. that. I'll have to watch that. I like him. And then Jamie. finally, our very own Carolyn Prevo is venturing onto another podcast next week called Around the Whiteboard. Woo! Where you will be taking on Colton Mertens and who is the other person? Aunt Haynes, I think. Aunt Haynes. So, that's three it. athletes. <laughs> so you will be on Peter's around the whiteboard. Um, are you prepared? I don't know the questions yet. So I'll find out the question the day before or the night before, I think. So I'll have to think about it. And give some some good answers to hopefully get a win. Yeah, um, I'm not sure you can predict how he scores, but if you can, good luck to you. I can't predict, but I gotta condense my talking. Is what Lex says. The one minute's gonna go by too fast. It'll go by real fast. Yeah, I like to set up my story. That would be tough. 60 seconds would be tough. But, yeah. 
Um, I think Rory had it written down in front of him on his laptop. That's not a bad idea. Smart. So, but that doesn't allow you to play off the other answers. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, teaching experience make you get you ready for that? Or are you nervous? No, I feel like I've done so much talking in any type of sport or thing. I am very opinionated on stuff sometimes. I'm good. Should be fine. Do you think it's more comfortable because you're with two other athletes? I'm assuming the questions will at least be things that we can relate to. Because sometimes let's say they're talking about, I don't know, something about affiliate owners. If you have like an athlete, people have just different perspective. It could be maybe tough on some of the questions that they might ask CrossFit related if you don't have that same experience as someone else. Um, just assuming that it's three athletes. I'm, I mean, normally it's the topics that are hot at that moment. So with the quarterfinals coming up, I'm maybe a question on what we'll see or not see. And I don't know. <laughs> so as an athlete, I know it's got to be tough for you to be on these shows because you don't want to say anything bad about your competitors. Do you think that the questions will be safe for you so that you, that's not a position you're in? Yeah. Okay. I don't think I would talk like badly about anyone anyways. Like I can critique someone, but not necessarily like I won't say anything bad. I don't think I hope not. <laughs> yeah. That that's my only worry with, especially when it's a mixed bag. Like if it's an athlete and a media person, the media person kind of has the ability to go like cut deeper because they're not really going to compete against that person or anything like that. Um, but with all athletes, I think you're safer that way. Should be fine. Yeah. Although I do think Colton was started the smack talking already. Did Has he? No. Uh, I'll see if I can pull it up really fast. And on us? And on, yes. Of course. Um, he's really bought into that kind of persona. Yeah, he and, has. Like, he's really coming into himself this last year, like doing this stuff. The Iron Hog. <sighs> yeah. He needs to have a t-shirt for that. I, I think Travis is probably making one. All right. All right. Let me see. If, uh, for some reason, Instagram's not let me load uh, stories today. Hmm. On my that computer. Story? Yeah, it's a story. Oh, Colton. Let's see what you got. Uh, yeah, it won't. It tries and then it just fails. I don't see anything on his story. Yeah, he um he basically says that he he accepts the challenge, but it won't be a challenge. He's there to dominate. Um a, like and he goes on with a bunch of adjectives. Oh no. Did you see that this Oh gosh. I'm just now seeing this post that the community golden barbell is just a gift card. They didn't actually get a Yeah, I, I heard that midway through. Well, we heard the barbell wasn't that cool anyway, so I guess if they get a gift card they can get what they want. Um, Kenneth says, <laughs> Colton said he isn't coming to debate. He's coming to dominate. It's not a workout, Colton. We got a chance here. We got a chance. <laughs> uh, Andrew Sten asked, what's the recent YouTube drama? I don't really want to get into it. Um, it's all out there. You can go to Too Hiller, much dirty uh, laundry being aired. Too many private conversations I don't want to see. To me, it's between people. That's my opinion. Yeah. I haven't wrapped my head around it all fully yet. Um, I only just finished Hiller's video and like I didn't see Jason CF Media's interview 
Like, I, I don't know how I feel about all of it yet. It's just, it's... Not to me, I, I just, I hope that some people can, like, just do things personally. Hash it out together. Like, not... There's some there's certain things that I feel like the public doesn't need to get in the middle of. Yeah. And I just feel like people then start taking sides, and I think that it's uncomfortable. It really it yeah. separates people, and I don't think that that's what our community is, is about. We should be excited that people have different content and are helping out, you know, grow our sport. And then I just see people now, like, you know, bullying or writing stuff to – certain people because they're on team this person and not that now it means they're against that person. So <clears throat> I don't like that. Stuff. Yeah, it does. It to me for a while, it's sort of felt like the high school cool kids club. And that has sort of, um, yeah, that's just rubbed me wrong a little bit. Andrew, um, it's, ba I mean, basically with Brian friend and Hiller's video is the least friendliest man in CrossFit so you can go watch that and make your own opinions on on what what you think of it yeah I think it does bring to light that the media behind the scenes is not always um, kumbaya and, and holding hands <clears throat> but I don't want to be a part of it yeah with that, we will end on that. And we will see everybody next time on Thursday Night CrossFit Talk. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.